Welcome to Sammy J's audio on Books channel. Your go-to plug for all genres of Sammy J novels audio narrations that will keep you yearning for more. Please subscribe and turn on post notification to get alerts on all new audiobooks upload. My Brother's Best Friend A Steamy Enemies to Lover's Romance Novel by Sammy J Narrated by Sylvia Watts Chapter 1 there were exactly two things Cooper Swanson and I had in common. The first was that we absolutely loved my brother. There was no question that my brother's best friend, my nemesis, would do anything for him. The second thing we both shared was the lack of ability to say no to him, which was why Cooper and I were now stuck sharing a cabin on a pre-wedding cruise my brother begged us to go on. Dude, come on, it'll be fine. My idiot brother Sam said, putting his arm around his fiance, and giving Cooper and me a look that said, so the hell what? How long have you known each other? Fifteen years? Two nights in a cabin won't be a big deal. Cooper gritted his teeth and glared at Sam. His six-foot-three height, broad shoulders, always styled dark brown hair and long lashes, made him the living embodiment of my dream guy. Just... Looking at him made me clench my thighs together, even if I hated him. He always had a different woman on his arm, and the man flirted with everyone except me. If this mix-up didn't affect me, too, I would have enjoyed the way his jaw tensed and his eyes almost burst out of his head in anger. You know what my plan was for this. Yeah, get drunk and forget what's-her-name. Sam grinned, placed a kiss on Juliet's head, and held out a fist to bump. You can still do all that, just not in the cabin you're sharing with Daniela. Let me see if they can't find another cabin, I said, ignoring the way Juliet seemed to study Cooper and me with a knowing look. It wasn't exactly a secret Cooper and I didn't get along, but we played nice in front of Sam when we could. Again, we both loved him, and he remained the only neutral ground we shared. Cooper glared at me his passionate eyes mirroring the turmoil in my gut. I'll go with you. I do not want to share a goddamn cabin with you for the weekend. He stepped into my space, his large chest just inches from me, and my breath caught in my throat at the warmth radiating off him. Feelings mutual, I mumbled, hating how my face flushed and my stomach tightened with a bright, hot fury. I elbowed him in the side as we made our way toward the desk. And he grunted. Score. He elbowed me back. While his touch sent goosebumps all the way to my toes, I shoved him out of my walking path. Cooper was the star of my high school dreams, and I couldn't even recall when he started hating me so much. I used to hang out with him and Sam all the time, but then one day, he started treating me like I ran over his dog. He iced me out of their friendship and made me feel insignificant ever since. Now our interactions were insults and ways to fluster the other. I referred to the back and forth as flirt-hating, and his blatant disgust at rooming with me sent me over the edge. We approached the concierge on the cruise ship, our bags still at our feet, and I gave my best smile. Excuse me, hi. We seem to have a mix-up, and we're hoping to get our own rooms for the weekend. The woman at the counter gave me a tight smile, but it shifted to lust when her attention landed on Cooper. Of course she noticed him. He was stupidly good-looking with his jawline and easy smile that made you feel like you were the only person in the world. For the first time, I wanted to use it to my advantage. This guy needs his own room. Please, help a man out, sweetheart, he said, leaning onto his elbows and flashing her his signature smirk. I used to pine over that smirk in high school, wishing I was on the receiving end. But now, I had the urge to hit his pretty face. This weekend is quite popular, I'm afraid. She typed on her computer and frowned before giving him a long, heated look. We have a deluxe suite available, but it's about three times as much. I groaned and pinched the bridge of my nose. I can't afford that, Coop. There is nothing we can do to fix the situation. This is my best friend's kid sister and the last person I want to share a cabin with. 
The woman furrowed her brow as she veered her attention back to me. She grimaced. There's nothing left besides the deluxe. I'm sorry. She did look sorry, so I give her that. Thanks anyway, I said, picking up my duffel bag and staring at the keys in my hands like they were a ticking bomb. Well, looks like you need to find a different bed made each night if you want to avoid our room. Or you can, he fired back his posture rigid and amped. Fuck. This was not how I wanted this weekend to go. His words stung to the point I blinked to gain composure for a second. Are you missing the part that this sucks for me, too? You are the last person I want to be stuck with, okay? There's no joy in this for either of us. I held out a hand to stop him, and his hard chest ran into it. I hated how sculpted he was, and how much he took care of his body, because, hot damn, it was gorgeous to look at. Yet every time he opened his mouth, I wanted to push him over the edge of the boat. Why did you stop me? You just wanted to touch me, hmm? God, no. I didn't have to fake shudder at the thought of touching him. He was gorgeous, but running hands over his hard body would be like selling my soul to the devil. We need to survive this for Sam. We're his family. And regardless of how much we loathe each other, we have to pretend. A dark shadow crossed his face, and his intense blue gaze landed on mine for a full beat. After losing our parents a few years ago, Sam and I had grown even closer. We were each other's only family, and despite my hatred, that included Cooper. He nodded, and his left cheek twitched. Agreed. This trip is for him and Juliet. Shake on it right now. We can fight when we're behind closed doors, but we pretend we're best buds when we're around them, like we used to be. I held out my hand and waited for him to take it. He took his sweet-ass time, but finally clasped his fingers around mine and squished our palms together. We can survive three days without killing each other, right? Debatable, he said, his grin curving up on one side. When he ran his tongue along his bottom lip, a burst of lust went straight to my core. This was not good. Chapter 2 Sam and Juliet wanted to settle into their cabin before meeting at the pool on the upper deck. It made sense for Cooper and I to do the same. So with fake smiles and laughter, we waved at them as they headed toward their cabin on the north side, and we walked toward ours. Our smiles transformed into scowls, and nerves danced along my spine the closer we got to our room. Fifteen-year-old me would have loved to spend the night in the same room as Cooper Swanson, but a much more irrational twenty-six-year-old me knew better. His familiar spicy cologne mixed with the scent of sunscreen, and his annoyed sighs grated on me by the time we reached our door. Do we need to have a schedule made so we avoid the room as much as possible? I asked. Be more mature than that, he said stopping once he walked into the minuscule cabin. There was a tiny cutout of a shower, a toilet, and a sink. Two beds lay on either side of the wall, and the patio had two lounge chairs. This seemed intimate. Way too intimate. I'm getting on a suit and heading to the lounge pool. He dropped his bag on the bed to the left, shuffling it around and pulling out red shorts. He didn't look back at me once as he went into the small bathroom which was fine. I needed the moment alone. I set my bag on the bed, checked my phone to see more apology messages from my ex, and ignored those. Matt had been selfish in bed, and when I pointed it out, he got all defensive and called me frigid. Yeah, okay. Wanting to have orgasms was totally frigid. Dick. I wanted to read, relax, and celebrate my brother's upcoming wedding. I bought a steamy romance book my friend recommended and set it on the bed, finding my new black bikini to change into after Cooper left. It wouldn't be so bad if he was gone most of the time. The door squeaked when he exited the bathroom, and my tongue got stuck in my mouth. I couldn't help but stare at his bare chest and chiseled stomach. Every muscle was earned from his dedication to the gym, and his tan chest was mouth-watering. But his arms were the best part of his body. They were straight-up, fist-biting material. 
Shit. He caught me staring and gave me a knowing look. Trying to find an insult, but coming up blank? I can always think of a way to insult you, even when you look like that. I paused and gestured to his chest. You seem distracted, and your face is red. Oh, this is fun. He smirked with the same heated look in his eyes that he gave the receptionist. Does my body make you nervous, Baby D? Ugh, the nickname from junior high. Don't take it personally, I said, needing to find a way to set him off kilter. In all our conversations, there was always the borderline flirt-hate issue, where we'd start an argument and I was never sure if it was flirting or actual anger. He loved getting under my skin as much as I enjoyed pushing his buttons. I narrowed my eyes and tried to sound as flippant as possible. You might look good, but you'd be no better than my ex. Garbage and bad and not unable to understand commitment. He pursed his lips and let his gaze move from my eyes to my mouth, lingering there for a beat before shifting toward my bikini on the bed. Hoping to get laid this weekend? If the opportunity presents itself, then yes. I shrugged and grabbed my suit. Have fun flaunting your shitty personality. I figured we'd meet up with Sam and Jules in an hour or so. I didn't wait before going into the bathroom and stripping down into my two-piece. It fit me perfectly, which was good since I spent a stupid amount of money on it. The cost was worth it, though. It pushed my boobs up and gave me fantastic cleavage, while the bottoms flirted with exposing too much. I wrapped my chiffon cover-up around my waist and put my dark hair up in a messy bun. Curls always escaped, no matter what I tried. But I didn't care. The sun would warm my skin, and I could relax. Maybe they'll have a bar nearby, I said to myself. I jumped back when I realized Cooper sat on his bed staring at me. Jesus, I thought you were leaving. Talk to yourself often? Sure do, especially when it comes to getting alcohol. I set my clothes down in my bag and put on flip-flops. Here's your room key. If you're grabbing a drink, I'm coming with you. Please, let's stay away from each other, I said with a snort. The last time we both got a little tipsy, we got into a screaming match over sand volleyball. Because you cheated, he fired back, jumping up from the bed. His eyes lit up when he was into something, and it only made the blue stand out more. You hit the net and the ref didn't call it. We should have won that game, and you damn well know it. I didn't hit the net, I said back, getting right into his face. Someone else on your team did. I'm too short to actually block anything, so how could I have hit the net? He shook his head, dragging his teeth over his bottom lip. Irritation swirled in his eyes. Bullshit. This is why you and I should not get a drink together. I laughed and looked up to find him staring at me with an entirely different expression. His nostrils flared, and the usual snarl completely disappeared from his lips. Cooper, I whispered, unsure if I was warning him or myself. His lips parted, and it was as if he sucked all the air out of my lungs in one breath. New suit? he asked, his voice huskier than before. Maybe I imagined it. Yes. I said, very aware of how close we were. My breasts were an inch away from his bare chest, and my traitorous body was about to combust. Our flirt-hate banter confused me, and it was easy to ignore those feelings when I would go weeks without seeing him. Now that we were in the same room for three days, it was in my best interest to end this conversation. As fun as this chat was, I need a drink. He cleared his throat and jutted his chin toward the door. After you, Daniela. If I was a better person, I wouldn't have swung my hips more than normal as I waltzed in front of Cooper and out the door into the narrow hallway. The main deck with the all-inclusive bar was up a couple flights of stairs, and we went the whole way there in silence. As soon as we arrived at the main deck, the sun hit my face, and I stopped, closed my eyes, and took in a calming breath. Three days of paradise. 
Three days of no work and no thinking about life, with only the sun and drinks as company. I sighed and stretched my arms over my head, just as Cooper let out a disgruntled groan. Don't ruin this for me. I wanted to go up here alone and you followed, I said to him. I pointed a finger at his chest, but he already moved toward the bar where a group of beautiful women gathered. Good for him. Maybe if he got laid, he'd lose part of the stick up his ass and leave me alone. Watching him flirt and charm the trio left me feeling prickly, which had nothing to do with jealousy and everything to do with my lack of a margarita. It was damn time to change that. Chapter 3 Sam and Juliet found me an hour later in the lounge area, with a margarita in each hand. Juliet grinned and plopped down next to me. Girl, you look like you're finally relaxing. I am. Cooper is out of my hair and I get to do nothing but this for three days. I know I call you a dumbass twice a week, Sam, but this was your best idea ever. Even though you're sharing a room with Cooper? He asked, a nervous look making his relaxed features tense up. Don't even worry, I slurred, the drinks getting to me just a little. We're very, very mature adults who can get along just fine. No, you're not, Sam laughed and sat on the opposite side of Juliet. You and Cooper are like teenagers when you're together. Then we shouldn't be your best man and maid of honor. I pursed my lips and tried to look authoritative. We'll likely ruin the wedding. Who will ruin your wedding? Cooper asked, joining our trio and sitting on the cushion right next to me. His weight made me slide down just a bit, so our thighs touched. I clenched my legs together to avoid feeling any sort of heat. He was just a good-looking guy who I hated. You and my sister, Sam said eyeing his best friend for a second. Oh, no we won't. We're buds. Ain't that right, baby D? He put his arm around me, bringing my body in tight against him. We're having fun as roommates, aren't we? His warm embrace sent unwanted desire straight to my core, even though the damn nickname made me want to push him overboard. Yes, I nodded, and tried my best to mean it. Oodles of fun. Sam barked out a laugh and pulled Juliet onto his lap. See, they're fine. Juliet rolled her eyes, but not before giving me a look that said she saw through the bullshit. She ran her fingers through my brother's hair, and it was such a tender moment that an uncomfortable pang went through my chest. I was so happy for him. I really was. It just made me the smallest amount envious. Baby D. Let's leave the lovebirds alone. Come on. Cooper stood and held out a hand, raising one perfect eyebrow in a dare. I could refuse his help and get up on my own, but the warning in his eyes made me take the assist. He pulled me up and put on a wonderful fake smile. Are we meeting for dinner at the fancy place? Yes, I made reservations. Black tie clothes, Juliet said already turning back to Sam and nuzzling him. Yeah, it was time to leave. Cooper didn't let go of my hand until we got to the bar when he lifted two fingers and said, Tequila shots. Oh, we're doing that then. The loss of contact shouldn't have weighed my stomach down with disappointment, but it did. I cleared my throat to try to rid myself of the emotion. It was stupid. He'd probably sleep with half the women on the deck, and here I was getting weird over holding hands. Not cool. Yes, we are. His glare moved from my eyes to my chest and back to my face, all in one breath. They are too happy to be around us right now. What's that supposed to mean? I'm trying to get over Tina, and you have this sad look in your eyes when you stare at them. I flinched at the hard truth to his words. As soon as they took root... My skin flamed with embarrassment. I love Juliet, and I'm so glad she's marrying Sam. I believe you. I think she's great for him, too. But it doesn't discount that it's not just the two of you anymore. That's not why I had that look, I fired back, 
wanting to defend myself. Luckily, the shots arrived first. I picked up the salt and poured some on my hand. I was about to down it when Cooper stopped me. What? You need the lime. He picked up the lime and put the damn thing in his mouth. What the fuck was he playing at? Then give it to me. He kept the fruit in his mouth so I'd have to nearly kiss him to get it. Humor danced in his eyes. The sick bastard loved taunting me, teasing me, and making me feel stupid. But this plan would backfire. I wet my bottom lip, and he trailed the movement with his gaze. I took the shot, licked the salt, and stood on my tiptoes to suck the lime right from his mouth. It wasn't a quick transfer, though. He was so tall, I had to place my hand on his shoulder to hold myself up, and I made sure to have my mouth touch his when I bit down on the lime. The explosive citrus hit my tongue as our lips grazed together. I gripped his shoulder tighter as my legs shook from the aggressive urge to kiss him without the lime. The tequila burned all the way down, but it had nothing on the lust amplifying in my gut. His eyes darkened, and he flared his nostrils, twice. Mmm, that tasted good. I smacked my lips and felt smug as hell. The buzz from the margaritas earlier gave me a tingly, almost naughty feeling, and I reached over the bar for another slice, finding one in a glass cup. Guess that means it's your turn, huh? Yup. He waited for me to put the lime in my mouth, and then he went through the motions. But instead of touching my shoulder, he gripped my waist. Hard. He poured the salt, licked it, and took the shot. Cooper's eyes flashed with heat before he yanked me toward him. Time seemed to slow as he bent down and covered my mouth with his. His skin was salty and hot from being outside all day and his calloused fingers rubbed against my stomach as a slight growl escaped his throat. Shit. I gulped, took a step back, and refused to look at him. We pretty much kissed, something I had thought about a million times before. I never imagined it would be like this, though. Hot and unexpected. It made me want more, to see how far I could push him. That was off-limits. Sam might deal with the pair of us fighting, but sleeping together? That was an absolute no. It would be too weird for him. We were his closet confidants, and neither Coop nor I would risk our relationship with Sam. I was sure of it. Plus, Cooper's endless string of different women didn't appeal to me in the slightest. I want to get in the water, I said, grabbing my unfinished margarita and leaving Cooper at the bar. The first pool was only a few strides away, so I undid my cover-up, set it on an empty chair, and walked in. My body needed to cool off, like right the hell now. Running away from me? Cooper said, joining me not a minute later with a knowing smirk that I hated. Never thought you'd do that. I rolled my eyes and pretended to not stare at his chest. The water sounded great. I was getting hot in the sun. Right. It had nothing to do with that little stunt you pulled. Stunt? Oh no, don't you dare, Cooper Swanson. I fired at him. My breathing came out in huffs and he wasn't shy at all about dropping his gaze to my chest. You started it with the lime bullshit, and I followed through. Your chest gets a little red when you're all hot and bothered. Thank you. I had no idea, I deadpanned, already counting down the days until the cruise was over. Also, stop staring at my chest. I wish I could. His voice was all throaty. And despite the fact there were 50 people in the pool, it felt too personal. Like he was standing too close, teasing me with that dangerous tone. What are you insinuating? I asked, tensing as I waited for his answer. He licked his lips and jutted his chin toward my breasts. Your suit is very thin, and it's not cold outside, so I'm going out on a limb here and guessing it's your reaction to me. How egotistical of you to assume my pointed nipples are because of you. They aren't, for the record. 
Some women have perky boobs, and I can never get mine to go down. He tightened his jaw and sucked in a breath. You are attracted to me, though. What's your goal here? To get me all hot and bothered? To get me riled up? To get me to admit it so you can use it against me? I moved closer to him. The water went to our waists, and while I hated letting him get the upper hand, his plan was working. My goal is to hear you explicitly say you think I'm hot. Okay, fine. You're hot. Does your ego need a boost that much? The shot had me feeling bold, and I ran my fingers over his muscles. I could spend hours on your body, and I'd bet money you know how to please a woman. He sucked in a breath when I traced his nipple and dragged my nail around his belly button. Daniela, he said, his voice husky and full of want. Careful. Of what? I stepped back and grinned, crossing my arms over my chest and admiring the first time I had seen Cooper flustered like this. Why should I be careful when I'm playing the game you started? You don't know what you're doing. Don't I? I'm not a 14-year-old girl anymore who got kicked out of her only friend group because of her brother's asshole best friend. So, I ask again, Cooper. Why warn me off when you started all of this? His eyes darkened. He took a couple of deep breaths before a woman walked up to him in a revealing suit. She was one of the women he talked to at the bar earlier, and I used her arrival as my escape. I went up the stairs to get my cover up and drink, and was thankful for the reprieve. I hated Cooper Swanson, and had no business teasing him like that. But the same thing kept repeating in my mind. He started it. Chapter 4 Showered and a little sobered up, I had my hair styled and down to go with my backless dress for the fancy dinner. Juliet wanted one nice night out with the four of us, and Emiliano's required patrons to dress up. My black dress dipped low in the back, making me go sans bra, and it was the perfect combination of sexy and dressy. I bought it for a charity function at work and never got to wear it. Only a tiny part of me was excited to see Cooper's reaction. He had yet to return to our small room, and we were supposed to meet at the place in 30 minutes. While I wasn't stupid enough to think he wouldn't be hooking up with one of the gorgeous women here, a part of me didn't want him to. That part wasn't large enough for me to analyze, because no world existed where Cooper and I got together. We fought, bickered, and most importantly, hated each other. I put on an extra layer of mascara and my brightest matte lipstick, and had just spritzed perfume when the door opened. His skin was tanner, with bright red patches on his shoulders. He's been outside all day. We're meeting the lovebirds in 28 minutes. I lifted my hair and rested it over my shoulder, as he trailed my movements with an intensity I hadn't experienced from him, ever. Can you be ready by then? Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't have been hanging out at the pool alone if I knew I'd be late. He looked down my body toward my legs, and I swore his breathing picked up. I retrieved my keycard from the top of the nightstand, and tried not to feel relief at the fact he hadn't slept with anyone else, because that wasn't my business. The second I took a step toward the door, he snapped at me. What are you doing? Leaving? Letting you get ready? Wait. He reached out and gripped my wrist, stopping me from going any further. Please. Wow, did that hurt to say? Don't push me, Daniela. His eyes flared, and my panties dampened from that look alone. His eyes narrowed with a crazed expression on his face. Call me wild, but I wanted to see how far I could tease him. Or what? Fuck, he muttered running a hand over his face. When he finished the gesture, his demeanor shifted. I wasn't leading our game anymore. He was in charge, and there was nothing I could do about it when he pressed my back against the door. Are you telling me you haven't thought about that almost kiss all afternoon? While you were with other women? No, I haven't, I said through clenched teeth, not wanting to give anything away. My heart tried to escape out of my chest, 
and I was aware of how close his mouth was to mine, but I kept my face passive. Are you saying you've been thinking about my mouth on yours? God damn it. He leveled his gaze as he put one hand on the door beside my face, caging me in and surrounding me with his smell of sunscreen and sweat and him. Tell me to stop. Stop what? This. He trailed one finger over my jawline, down my neck, and right into my cleavage. I sucked in a breath, and my legs shook when he traced the outline of my pebbled nipple. Just say it, he demanded, as he pinched it between his thumb and forefinger, making me slam my head against the door and groan. Fuck, Danny. He didn't stop. He repeated the process with my other breast while keeping his eyes on mine. It was hot as hell, and I licked my lips. That sent him over the edge. He lifted me up, and I wrapped my legs around his waist. His tongue glided along my neck before he bit down on me. If I slide my hand up your thighs, will you be wet? Maybe, I said, somehow still playing this game between us, even though my body felt like it was on fire. The good kind of fire. The type of heat I hadn't felt with anyone in years. Are you going to find out for yourself, or take my word for it? Oh, brazen girl, he said in a pleased tone. Guess I will, huh? He braced me against the wall before he reached between our bodies and slid his hand up my thigh, pausing when he got to my lace panties. He teased my clit over the material and let out the deepest, most satisfying sigh I had ever heard. Jesus, you're turned on. He slid the material to the side just as the cabin phone rang, making us both jump. It was like the phone call flipped a switch and everything we were doing became apparent. Cooper Swanson was almost fingering me. What the hell? It's probably Sam, I mumbled, smoothing my dress down as my feet hit the ground. I stumbled to the phone and picked it up, trying to sound natural. Hello? Yo, you guys coming? We got here early my brother said. Ah, uh, yes. Cooper is showering. I'll head up now and he can join us. Nah, take your time. Just wanted you to know Juliet is three sheets to the wind, so if the carbs don't sober her up, we'll be heading in early. Thanks for the warning. I hung up and faced the music. Cooper leaned against the bathroom door, his erection tenting the fabric of his swimsuit. An unreadable look flashed across his face. They're up there. Yeah, I heard. You should get ready fast. I jetted my chin toward the shower. Hustle. We need to talk. Oh god, it's not a big deal, okay? We flirt hate all the time. It just went too far. My fingers still shook, and I craved a release so goddamn bad. But I needed to write this off as an almost regret rather than a full one. Seriously, if you're worried, don't be. Flirt hate. Yes, that's what we do. We push each other for fun, don't agree on anything besides the fact we love Sam, and sometimes it's flirty. Flirt hate. That's what you think we do? Oh my god, yes. Does your brain not work when your dick is hard or something? Come on, go shower. Let's head up there. He studied me for a minute before he finally went into the room and shut the door. I welcomed the break. This was more intense than I was used to, and while I might have fantasized about him before, the fact we almost hooked up rattled me. I wasn't sure if I should wait for him to talk or if I should go, and by the time I fixed my hair and applied another layer of lipstick, he walked out of the bathroom with nothing but a towel. Not fair. What's not fair? He asked with a large smirk. Shit, I didn't mean to say that to you. I blushed head to toe and watched his every movement. He might work in finance, but this guy was always at the gym. But it's not fair when you look like that. Because you want me? He asked in a blasé tone, like he was commenting on the weather. He bent over his bag and tossed boxers on the bed along with a white shirt. I was about to answer when he dropped his towel, 
showing me a side view of his very present erection. He turned all the way around and looked proud. Wow, baby D's quiet. This is a rare day. I'm seeing your massive dick, so yeah, rare day. God, I panted. Put some clothes on. Why? This is no big deal, right? He was using my own words against me. Damn it. I gritted my teeth and really wanted to even the score to knock that cocky look off his face. You're right. It's no big deal to see your dick. They're all the same, really. Okay, Danny. Sure. He rolled his eyes as he slipped on his boxers and grabbed a pair of black trousers. Watching him get dressed did something to me. It felt more intimate than sleeping together. This required a certain level of trust. Well, it did for me. He probably banged chicks all the time and yanked on his clothes afterwards. So what did I know? I cleared my throat and got myself back in the game. How could I rile him up? Make him experience even a bit of the madness I'd felt all these years around him. Man, my dick really has gotten you quiet. You're glaring at my crotch right now. He looked pleased about it, too. Should have shown you the goods years ago. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath as the bastard laughed and laughed. This was unacceptable. An idea formed, making me almost giddy. As he buttoned up his dress shirt, I stood up and frowned. Why the face? He asked, playing right into my hands. I'm uncomfortable. I made a real show of shifting my weight back and forth. I think, yes, this'll help. I lifted one leg up and slid my red lace thong off my one leg, then the other leg, and stepped out of them completely. It felt scandalous and thrilling to be doing this in front of him, the guy I dreamed about for years. My heart pounded in my chest as I stared at his shocked face, and I hoped I looked as badass as I felt. I strode over, swaying my hips and taking my time running my free hand over his chest and down his stomach. He sucked in a breath when I got to the bulge in his pants, and I squeezed, getting a high from knowing he was turned on. Then, I tucked them in his pocket. There, I feel much better. Cooper's mouth parted, and he muttered a bunch of unintelligible things from a slack jaw. I patted his cheek rubbed my thumb over his bottom lip, and walked my ass right out the door. Chapter 5 Cooper joined Sam, Juliet, and I ten minutes later, and he would not stop staring at me. Not through appetizers or pre-dinner drinks, and not when our meal arrived. I chose to sit by Juliet, so the only way he could touch me was with a casual brush of his foot on mine. But even that was risky, because the table was small enough for all our feet to pile together. Sam got done telling a story about the three of us getting into shit when we were in junior high, and I smiled at the memory. We thought it would be fun to TP our assistant principal's house. We got caught and had to clean it up, but the prank was worth it. You all have such a fun past. It's wonderful to see how close you three have been all this time. Juliet beamed at us. Not always, I corrected. It had to be the endless amount of drinks that I said anything at all. My go-to attitude was to pretend the past didn't hurt me, but the flirt-hate game had me off balance. Plus, Cooper's heated stare needed to be knocked back a notch. What do you mean? Sam asked, a line appearing between his brows. You two are my people. Well, now Jules is in, so the three of you. We are a team of four now. Wow, good math, bud. Have another beer, Cooper teased, getting a laugh from everyone but me. Are you talking about high school, Baby D? I hate that name. Ah, oh, really? I think it's cute, Juliet said, her tipsy smile too large for her face. It's so endearing. Jules is nice and all, but it's not cute. You want another nickname? Baby J? J babe? J bird? Sam said. Okay, no. No, stop it, she said, 
Everyone laughing again. You're right. Dumb idea. Sam shook his head and smiled at his fiancée with so much warmth, it felt weird to watch. Jules is perfect. Settle down, you two. I can only handle so much cute shit. Cooper said it with a smile, and no one took offense. For that, I was thankful. Daniela, what do you mean by your statement? Freshman year. You and Sam decided I wasn't your friend anymore. You cut me out of your circle. You mean when we were sophomores and all our friends were trying to get with you? Yeah, fuck that. Sam made a face and took a long drink. There were bets going on about who you go out with, and I refused to deal with that shit. We stopped inviting you to things because our friends were horny assholes. I had no idea, I said, my thoughts blurring. It wasn't... Cooper didn't tell you to stop hanging out with me? What? Sam snapped his gaze to his friend. No. I made you think that, Cooper said, his expression void of any emotion. The guy you were crushing on was in that group, and I didn't want you to get hurt. Oh my god, this is so damn sweet. You guys, I'm so glad I'm joining your little family. Juliet sniffed and leaned over to me for a long hug. I patted her back even though I could feel the burn of Cooper's gaze on my face. This changed a lot of things. Like the fact my hate for him started that year, and every interaction we had after was tainted. If he did that to protect me, did he not hate me then? Did I even hate him? I'm glad you're joining us too, I said, squeezing her tight against me. You're going to be an awesome sister. Oh my god. I've never had one. We can go on trips and do nails and hang out and... Wow, she said, sitting up and grabbing her head. I'm drunk. You are, but it's cute, I said, meeting Cooper's amused expression for a second. Sam traded places with me at the table and helped his fiancé finish her food. This put Cooper and I way too close. I could use a mint. Want one, Baby D? Cooper asked, holding out his hand. When I reached over, instead of a mint, there were my panties. Right there. On his hand. No. No! He smirked, but he didn't put them back in his pocket. He kept them in his lap, running his fingers over the panties under the tablecloth. The fact that I was commando became that much more apparent, especially with the way he affected me. Sam, take your bride-to-be back to your room. I'll stay here with Daniela and make sure she gets all the food she wants. You're right, my man. Sam stood, helped Juliet up, and held out a fist. You're the best. Sis, love you. Have fun, but not too much, you know? Like, have the right amount of fun. I snorted. Drink water and take care of your woman. See you tomorrow. They walked off toward the exit. And as soon as they disappeared from view, Cooper reached under the table and put his hand on my bare thigh. I sucked in a breath and froze. Oh, what are you doing? I've been dying to touch you. He scooted his chair closer to mine. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you a question, and if you're lying, I move my finger up your leg. How do you know if I'm lying? I asked spreading my legs further apart to rile him up. It worked. He cleared his throat, but kept his fingers between my knee and center. I'll know. First question. Have you hated me since freshman year? Yes. Lie number one. You don't hate me. He moved his touch up my leg, and my hand shook against the wine glass. I do, Cooper. It's true. He moved his finger closer. If I thrusted my hips out just a bit, he'd be where I wanted him. If you hated me, you wouldn't have sent me Christmas gifts every single year. You wouldn't have dumped a glass of water on Allison when we found out she cheated on me. You wouldn't have been okay rooming with me if you actually hated me. But I... You said rooming with me was the last thing you wanted, too. 
This isn't about me right now. But for the sake of honesty, the reason I didn't want to spend two fucking nights with you is because of what's happening right now. Your fingers being one inch from inside me? He barked out a laugh. Just when I think I'm flustering you, then you say shit like that and it goes straight to my dick. I always thought we just didn't like each other. I never realized your actions in high school were noble. It's interesting you've kept that from us all these years. He sucked in a breath and moved the finger closer so he barely touched my clit. I stilled and had to set my glass down to prevent the liquid from spilling. He made small circles, like this wasn't the naughtiest thing we could have been doing. If I had known that was why you hated me, I could have corrected it. My eyes fluttered shut as his movements almost brought me to the point of no return. Hell, I'd been on edge since the Lyme incident, and I gripped the side of the table as my breathing picked up. Are you... are you going to keep doing that? In the room? Yes. Here? No. He stopped and slid one long finger inside me for a second, before removing his hand entirely. He oh so casually brought the finger to his mouth and sucked it. I was going to burst. For real. I panted and swallowed so hard it hurt. Holy shit. He stared at me, dropped his gaze to my chest and flared his nostrils. He raised his hand in the air, the one with the fingers that were just inside me, and flagged down a waiter. We're heading out, thank you. Room 234B. He held out a hand. Well? Yeah, I mumbled, so unsure of what was happening. Cooper made me think he hated me when I was 14, yet he'd been protecting me. He hated me too, though, right? What was the score? Who was messing with who right now? I can hear your brain whirling, Baby D. He chuckled and stalked me in the hall before we opened the door to our room. He pushed me against the wall running his nose along my jaw before he stopped and met my gaze. I've been thinking about this for over a decade. About what? He didn't answer. He cupped the back of my head with one strong hand and kissed me. His lips were soft and warm, and he tasted like red wine and sin. He groaned into my mouth as he pulled on my hair, tilting my head up. Oh my god. Cooper Swanson is kissing me. Kissing wasn't the right word. Devouring. Tasting. Owning. The second I parted my lips, he slid his tongue inside, and it was nothing but wet, hungry kisses and heavy breathing. I clawed at his chest, wanting to feel him against me, and he cupped my neck in a possessive grip. My body was out of my control. I moaned when he broke the kiss, and he looked down at me with a wild hunger. Oh, Danny, three days is not going to be enough. Hmm? He didn't answer. He unlocked the door to our cabin and picked me up, carrying me inside before he dropped me onto the bed. I didn't get a word in before he was on top of me, kissing and biting and sucking my skin. Christ, you taste sweet. I shuddered and arched my back so my hips ground against him, and he let out the sexiest groan. This is happening, huh? He stopped, lifted his upper body off mine, and stared down at me. Oh, this is definitely fucking happening, Daniela. Chapter 6 I reached out and ran my fingers over his jawline moving my hand down his broad shoulders and hard chest. I've thought about this so many times. He shut his eyes and let out an impatient sound. Makes me furious at you. Why? I unbuttoned his shirt, one at a time, and heat radiated off him. He was so built and sexy, and mine for the next hour or two. He stared down at me when I slid the dress shirt off his shoulders and ran my hands all over his defined muscles. Each touch made him shudder, and knowing I had this power over him went straight to my head. 
Because I thought you disliked me for other reasons. Not some bullshit one. He stilled my hands when they got to his belt, and his eyes gleamed at me. Oh, baby. I'm getting my fill of you first. I think I deserve it. Fill of me? I repeated, my brain not functioning at normal speed. What do you... Oh. He slid my dress up over my hips, exposing my bare pussy to his heated gaze, and he licked his lips. Hmm, Danny. Those two words got me hotter and wetter than my last three boyfriends ever could. I squirmed when he scooted down the bed until his knees hit the ground, and he lifted one thigh over each of his shoulders. He teased my inner thighs with strokes of his fingers, before following each movement with his tongue. The sensation was explosive. I bucked before he even put his tongue on me. When he did, I gripped his hair, hard. Cooper, whoa. That's right. Say my name. He flicked my swollen clit with his tongue before sliding two fingers into me. Fuck, Danny. You taste so... damn... good. His words just made me hotter, needier, and wetter. Tingles spread down my spine when he increased the tempo of his tongue on me, and I clenched around his fingers as my muscles tightened. He was so... unlike my exes. My god... He flicked his tongue against my clit over and over, not slowing down or stopping as I bucked underneath him. I looked down at him and found his gaze on my face. Seeing him watch me fall apart made my chest tighten. This is... wow. Feel good? Oh god, yes. I arched my hips again, and he sucked against my most sensitive area harder as he increased the tempo of his fingers. My breath came in pants, faster as the orgasm remained just out of reach. Cooper? Yes, I'm close. He hummed into me and held my hips down with his free hand. I exploded. Cooper? Yes, yes. Pleasure hit me like a lightning bolt, paralyzing my veins and making my breath catch in my throat as ecstasy spread through me. I rocked my hips against his mouth, and he just held on tighter, letting me ride out the orgasm. Sweat pooled on my chest and glistened all over my body, but I didn't care. Cooper kissed below my belly button and up my stomach. I barely caught my breath before he slid the dress up over my head and captured my nipple in his mouth. I moaned when he sucked it hard before moving to the other breast and repeating the process. I will never forget what you sound like when you come, he said, as he licked between my breasts. You are the sexiest thing. Cooper, I murmured, unsure of what I'd even wanted to say. Orgasming once was my usual, but the more he kept teasing my nipples and whispering these filthy things, the hotter I got. I need you naked. Oh, I will be. But I've dreamed about your goddamn tits for years. Let me play with them. Later, I said, sitting up and pushing him so I could straddle his lap. Pants off. You teased me with your dick earlier. My turn now. He sucked in a breath when I reached for the belt and undid it, quickly unzipping his pants and dragging them off his legs. He helped remove his boxers, and soon enough... I straddled a very naked Cooper Swanson, who had a huge erection, for me. His chest was perfect. Just a light dusting of hair and hard pectoral muscles that clenched when I traced my finger over them. His shoulders were firm and strong, and I bent down and ran my tongue along the spot where his neck met his shoulder. Shit, he hissed. I ran my hands over every part of him I could. His biceps, his chest his stomach. I couldn't get enough of his warm skin and defined muscles. This was the body of a man who worked out and earned every muscle he had. My fingers tingled with want, and an almost desperate energy took over now that I had Cooper beneath me with his cock resting against his stomach. Danny, baby, 
Stop staring at my dick with your tongue out like that. I'm barely holding on, he said, his voice tight and strained. I giggled and felt empowered. Don't you want me to return the favor? I got onto my knees between his strong legs and brought his length into my mouth. He moaned my name when I took him deeper, swirling my tongue around his head a few times before sucking him hard. He held the back of my head with his hand and guided me to go faster. So I did. I loved tipping the scales in my favor now. He was at my mercy, and I took him deeper, going fast and then slow, teasing him until his thighs tensed around me. I dug my fingernails into his skin and edged him in further. Christ, Danny, slow down. Please, he begged, jerking out of my mouth. Cooper picked me up and threw me on the bed. You filthy girl. He smiled and dove into his bag to get a condom out, slipping it on within 30 seconds. I need to be inside you right fucking now. I positioned myself onto my elbows, but he shook his head and sat on the edge of the bed. On my lap. I got up and straddled him again, letting him guide his cock into me. I'm having sex with Cooper Swanson. My living fantasy. I had to pause and take a deep breath to adjust to his size. It hurt a bit, and I took a few breaths, lightly arching my hips against him, until the sensation started to feel good. Damn good. Shit, Cooper. I moaned, gasping when he pinched my nipples hard. Wow. Give me that mouth, he demanded, and he guided my hips with one hand as he wrapped the other around my nape to kiss the hell out of me. Wine and the taste of my pleasure burst onto my tongue as he sucked my tongue into his mouth. His cock thrust into me harder and harder as my walls stretched. I couldn't get enough of him. He knew everything about me, which offered a certain freedom and trust I rarely had with anyone. He lit me up inside, even while I felt safe with him, and the intoxicating combination drove me wild. I yanked him closer to me so our chests pressed together, and at some point, he reached between us and played with my clit again. Oh, wow, I mumbled as I quickened my pace, rocking against him. You're so fucking sexy, Daniela. He groaned into my ear, moving to grip my ass with one large hand. Ride me like this, yes. His encouragement made me want to go harder, grind into him more, and none of my previous hang-ups intervened. I didn't care if I was too rough or demanding or wild. I wanted all of him, and he matched each kiss and touch with more. His hold on me tightened, and he stopped, picked me up, and tossed me onto the bed. On your stomach. I rolled over, and he slid into me from behind in one smooth motion. He pressed a kiss on my back before he ran a hand down my side, the brief gentleness of the moment making my eyes prickle. This gentle sight of him floored me and made me want things I shouldn't. But I didn't have time to overanalyze how soft his touch was. He put all his weight on me and held my hands over my head as he pounded into me. Cooper? Oh my god. Yes? I moaned, sweat making my hair plaster to my face. He quickened his pace, and the only sound was the slap of his skin hitting mine. He arched my hips up, thrusting right where I needed, and the familiar tingle started again. Come with me, babe, he said going harder and tightening his hand around my waist as I lost myself in pleasure. Everything blurred together with my orgasm. The rough sound of my name coming from his lips, the way he shook against me, and how my ears rang from the intensity of feeling him against me. My heart pounded, and my limbs and hair were hot and sweaty. My chest tightened at the realization of what we did. We crossed that line and there was no going back. That was... I trailed off, closing my eyes and relaxing under his weight. He pulled out, kissed the middle of my back, and smacked my ass. 
I'm pissed at you. Wait, what? I rolled over and found him tossing the condom into the trash. You're pissed? Yes. He smirked and sat down next to me, completely at ease being nude. We could have been doing this for years if you told me that was why you were always so snippy with me. Years, Danny. I don't know about that, I said, stretching my arms over my head and sliding my legs over to hang off the bed. We fight a lot. Foreplay. We disagree on almost everything. Sexual tension, he countered, completely unfazed by my excuses. Are you saying you don't want to do this again and again? I'm pretty sure I left you completely satisfied, unlike your last guy. Wow, went straight there. If we want to do this, we can bring any of your past flings into the mix. I snorted and reached into my bag for a sleep shirt. But before I could put it on, I was yanked back onto the bed and into Cooper's lap. Um, hey. Hey. He grinned down at me and ran his hands up and down my back. I know what you're doing. What's that? Trying to come up with all the reasons why this was a mistake and how we shouldn't do it again. Just try me. I have counterpoints for every argument. Interesting. I wasn't going to do any of that, actually. I was grabbing a shirt because it feels weird to be sitting naked with my brother's best friend. My tongue was inside you. And you're blushing about me seeing your fantastic tits? Baby D, you're adorable. I rolled my eyes, but my entire body flushed with how he was staring at me. Like I was precious to him. He never looked at me like this, with warmth and tenderness, and it made my throat get tight. Why now? He narrowed his eyes and tilted his head to the side, his hands never leaving my back. He wet his bottom lip before speaking. I've always been attracted to you, Danny. You're fucking beautiful, and my God, these tits. He moved one hand to pinch each nipple for a second. Seeing you in that tiny-ass swimsuit destroyed my self-control. I shook my head, the utter shock of his revelation making my skin tingle. Always, huh? Yes. Always. In high school, I couldn't do a damn thing about it. Your brother would have killed me. He laughed and tilted my head back before pressing his lips on mine in a slow, sensual kiss that wasn't leading anywhere. His warm mouth was filled with dirty promises, and my lower stomach clenched just thinking about doing this again with him. I didn't mean to groan or grind on him, but when I did, he chuckled. How many times do you think you can come this weekend? Are we going to keep count? I challenged back, closing my eyes when he dropped his mouth to close around my nipple. He flicked it in slow, easy movement, before sucking and teasing it with his teeth. I almost whimpered. The rumors must be true then, I murmured. Rumors? He released me with a loud pop and looked up with fiery lust in his eyes. What are you talking about? Do you have any idea how hard it was to have a crush on you while I hated you? I would have to listen to all the girls talk about how sexy you were, how good you were in bed, how unselfish you were. I pushed him onto his back and dragged a finger straight from his collarbone to his erection. It sucked. You can't hate someone and have a crush on them. Don't tell me what I can and can't do. I fired back. It was ridiculous that our verbal banter really was a form of foreplay. Heat spread through my veins as my breathing picked up. The bastard grinned like he knew exactly what was happening. We won't work, Cooper. Are you sure about that? We seemed to work real well when you were sweaty and beneath me. He arched himself up, but whatever he saw on my face stopped him. Hmm. Your body is reacting to me, but your mind is muddled. I wasn't sure how to respond. He was right. Cooper took a deep breath before picking me up and setting me on the bed next to him. The loss of his heat, his touch, and the hungry look in his eyes was almost too much. 
My eyes stung for a second before he set his dress shirt on my shoulders. Wait, what? Put this on. I'm going to get us drinks and meet you on our balcony in ten minutes. He cupped my face, ran his thumb over my bottom lip, and frowned. I know casual sex isn't your thing, so we're going to talk about it. There's no need. He cut me off with a hard kiss, where he bit down on my lip and pulled it until it stung. The possessive action thrilled me, making my heart beat faster and my stomach swoop in a dangerous way. None of that shit. Be a good girl and wear just this when you sit on the balcony. Ten minutes. You better be there. He patted my ass before throwing on shorts and a shirt, and then left our cabin. I took a deep breath and tried not to freak out about everything that happened from our tipsy and lust-fueled haze. Shit, I muttered to myself, buttoning Cooper's shirt and unashamedly sniffing it because it smelled like him. I just fucked my brother's best friend. The guy who had been part of our family for years and would always be around. Could I face him? Knowing how hard I came with him? Yes. Would I still argue with him and hate him? Yes to the arguing, but no to the hating. Maybe he was right, and I hadn't hated him all this time. I sighed and piled my hair on top of my head before I went to our private balcony. Partitions separated us from neighbors on either side, but they didn't stop the sounds of people having a rocking good time on our right. My legs shook from the aftermath of coming twice and the promise for more even though I wanted to play it cool when he returned. I'd thank him, agree we wouldn't do it again, and that would be that. But I wanted more. The more was the problem. He wanted more too. But if we fooled around for the weekend, how much would that screw everything up? Sam could never know. I groaned just as Cooper walked into the cabin. I looked over my shoulder to see him holding a six-pack of beer with a dark look in his eyes. You wearing anything under my shirt? He asked, as he slid the door open and came outside. No. Good. He removed his shirt and shorts, leaving himself in boxers, and moved behind me on the chair so my back pressed against his chest. Okay, let's talk. Chapter 7 he handed me a beer and used his other hand to trace circles on my inner thigh. I tried squeezing my legs together, but he clicked his tongue and spread them wider, exposing me to the cool air. Are you still wet for me? Cooper, this isn't talking. Yes, it is. We're saying words with our mouths. He laughed, and the deep sound traveled straight to my core. He moved his finger closer and closer, until he slipped inside me and let out the deepest, satisfied sigh. Oh, you're still soaked. Good to know. How is this helping? I asked, unable to stop myself from moaning and leaning farther back into him. You're trying to distract me. It's not working if you can talk. He bit down on my earlobe and dragged his tongue down my neck to my collarbone. Danny, I fantasized about you like this for a decade. Wet and mine. Don't ruin this for me. I shuddered at his words. He slipped two more fingers into me, curling up at the end and causing that burning sensation to grow. Well, what about Sam? I forced out. I don't want to even think about your brother right now. Not when you're going to come on my hand. We're outside. People could hear us, I said between pants. It was no use, though. My attempts to stop this were futile because he brought his thumb to my clit and swirled the sensitive nerve ending until I was close again. Be quiet, then. I'm not stopping unless you come. God, I loved his commanding tone. He set his beer on the ground and used his other hand to tease my nipples. I closed my eyes and put my weight onto him. He stopped all movements and I sat up, desperate. Why? What? Are you watching? No. 
watch my hands. I gulped as he started fingering me again. Seeing his masterful digits work me into a withering mess should not have been this sexy, but it was. Wow, Cooper, I whispered, clenching my muscles as the build-up started. I'm going to... Yes, I moaned, bucking against his hand as waves and waves of pleasure made me see stars. He never broke stride, moving those fingers in and out as I fell apart. It didn't matter who could hear me, and by the time I came down from the high, all sound stopped. God damn it, Danny. That was hot as fuck. You put on quite a show for our friends. Sure enough, hushed whispers came from a cabin to our right, and my face flamed. They heard me? Oh my god. I need to jump overboard. Right now. Cooper teased, laughing into my neck. You're staying right here until I'm done with you. Are you always this bossy in bed? Actually, no. He stilled and nipped at my ear again. You bring it out in me. I snorted. My legs were completely jelly at this point. Three orgasms in one night was a new record. You might be right about our banter as foreplay. I know I am. So cocky. I know you better than you think, Baby D. All these years of us bickering was me trying to suppress my attraction to you. Maybe it was the sad look in your eyes when you watched Sam and Juliet. Or maybe because I really did plan to sleep around to get Tina out of my system. But I was done acting like I don't want you. I was glad we weren't facing each other. My face faltered. Are you using me to get over Tina then? Are you using me to learn that some men aren't assholes in bed? Ah, uh, he repeated my own words right back at me. Touche, Cooper. There's no ulterior motive here. I just stopped pretending I didn't want this. The Lyme incident was a test. If you weren't comfortable or didn't want me, you wouldn't have done it. True, I said, grabbing a sip of his beer and setting it down before nuzzling into him again. But I did it to get more points than you. More points? In our flirt-hate game. The scale always swung between my favor or yours. Whenever I thought you got the best of me, I had to even it. Like when you walked around with your dick out before dinner. I needed to put some points on my side, so I gave you my panties. Jesus, woman. He laughed and rocked his erection into my ass. I knew you were dangerous, but fuck. I love when you challenge me. What else have you done like this? Hmm, I paused, thinking about all the games I'd played in the past. One time you made a comment about wearing a bra, so instead of hiding my nipples, I went to the bathroom and played with them until they were even harder points. You were really pissed at me that day. You're going to kill me, and I'm okay with it. He dug his hands into my hips and leaned forward to kiss my neck. Are you on the pill? Yes. Why? Are you clean? Cooper, I said, my throat all scratchy and my voice husky. I am. Why? I want to slide into you right now. Knowing you teased me and fucked with me all these years has me hard as a rock. He lifted me up, spread my thighs, and waited. I just got tested because I didn't trust Tina. I'm good. Me too. My voice shook as I said the words, realizing again the weight of them. Trust wasn't easily given, and while I might not feel safe with him when it came to my heart, I did with my body. Cooper would never risk anything with me, and knowing he would be the first to go bare got me even wetter. I trust you. That's all it took before he slid into me, completely bare and... Holy shit. He felt so goddamn good without any barriers. He took his time going in and out, making sure to hit me in the G-spot with each slow thrust. I saw stars behind my closed eyes as the pressure built. His grip on me threatened to be painful as he sped up, but I didn't care. He pounded into me hard and without mercy. 
Cooper lost control, and I loved it. I did this to him. I made the hottest man I had ever known lose his mind, and the feeling was dangerous because I wanted to do it again and again. You're so tight and wet. Shit. He hissed between pants. He moved us so I was on my hands and knees on the chair, and he held one leg up before he plunged harder and deeper into me. One hand rested on my ass and needed it. This okay, baby? Yes, I moaned, holding on to the chair for dear life at the way he pounded into me. It was the hottest thing I had ever experienced, and I wanted more. He pulled my hair from the tie, and my locks spilled down my back and over my face. He wrapped them around one of his hands and pulled. I love your fucking hair, he groaned, his body getting tense against me. Shit, I'm going to come. He gave three final thrusts before he stilled, pulling my hair harder as he grunted and moaned my name. It was wild, passionate, and hot as fuck. My core still throbbed with need. He pulled out and unbuttoned his shirt before he took it off me to wipe between my legs. Danny, I say this with absolute certainty. I'm just getting started with you. Is that so? I said, as he kissed each ass cheek and tossed the dirty shirt to the floor. He spun me around so our naked bodies were chest to chest, and the look in his eyes should have worried me. It was intense, tender, and almost gentle. Instead of analyzing it, I kissed him. He hummed into my mouth for a second before pulling back. Yes. So we fool around all weekend then? The warmth evaporated in his eyes like a snap of my fingers. He swallowed and said with a slow pronunciation of each word, Is that what you want? I blinked at the lack of confidence. He usually oozed charm and flirted with being too cocky, but that guy was nowhere to be seen. This side of Cooper was sweet and nervous. Is that what you want? Don't play this game with me. Be honest. I don't know. I don't regret this, but with Sam and all the ways this could go wrong, is it worth it? There. I said my piece, and he could do with it what he wanted. You're an adult, and your brother will understand if we want to be together. If he needs to hit me, I can handle him, but I'm more concerned about you. He cupped my face, and a sad expression flashed across his. Whatever he was going to say shifted, and he offered his signature smirk instead. The playful look returned to his eyes, but the reappearance of his usual grin felt like a punch to the gut. Danny, he said, playing with the ends of my hair. Let's enjoy the weekend together. No strings attached. We can hang out, relax, and drink during the day, but we're naked every time we're in this room. We don't tell Sam? I'll leave that to you. Just for the weekend? Again, your choice. I'm in. I'm so in, I said, smashing my lips to his. This was the out I needed to protect myself. Two more days of enjoying Cooper should be enough to get him out of my system before we ruined everything. He grinned against my mouth, but the smile stopped when I sucked his tongue hard. Whoa. Danny, I didn't know this talk would turn you even more wild. Lots you don't know about me, Coop. Then let's find out. I woke up with his face between my thighs and on the edge of an orgasm before completely losing myself to him. It was a hell of a way to greet the day, which only got better when he suggested we shower together in the tiny stall. He completely shattered my orgasm record and it hadn't even been 24 hours since we'd first fucked. It was an addicting feeling, that was for sure. Even watching him and Sam talk at dinner the next night, I counted down the minutes until we could get back to our room and try something new. Is rooming with Cooper okay? Juliet asked me in a quiet voice. I know you're uncertain about him. Wait, what do you mean? Your brother brushes it off every time, 
but I can tell Cooper makes you nervous. Unsure if you're attracted to him or if you really dislike him. She laughed, but put a hand on mine. I know you're here because of how much you love Sam, and I'm so grateful you're with us. Her statement made me blink to catch my bearings. He always had me second-guessing myself, but was it because I knew he had the power to hurt me? Because I'd fantasized about being naked with him countless times? I matched her smile and caught Cooper staring at me with questions in his eyes. He needed to knock that off if we didn't want Sam to find out. I focused on Juliet again. We're okay. We have a detailed history, but we're making it work. He keeps looking at you. It's because I'm a pain in his ass. He's plotting retribution. I don't think that's it. But Danny, she said, her voice getting serious. If it's more, it's okay. My throat got tight again, and I narrowed my eyes at her. What? What are you ladies talking about? I hate secrets, Jules, Sam said pulling his fiancé into his lap and kissing her loudly. You had your serious face on, babe. My pulse sped up with the nervousness at being found out. Just girl talk. Absolutely none of your business, you nosy bitch, she said to Sam, making us all laugh. I loved her so damn much and was so thankful she was going to be family. Her words repeated in my mind. If it's more, it's okay. If what was more? Me and Cooper? Did she know? How? What if she told Sam her suspicions? How's your food, baby D? Cooper asked in the same bored tone he used around me all day in front of Sam. Great. How's yours? What the fuck is going on? Sam asked, glancing between the two of us. You've been polite and weird today. Knock it off. Did something happen? Cooper stared at me for a beat before shrugging. She found out I wasn't the asshole she thought I was all these years, so we came to an agreement. Which is? Sam asked, staring at me now. Him looking at me made me sweat. We were lying to my brother, something I never wanted to do. We don't hate each other, I said, and took a long sip of water. It's weird, I know. Sam laughed and rolled his eyes, completely oblivious to the fact his best friend and sister were doing each other in every way possible. Of course you don't hate each other, idiots. Juliet leaned over to whisper something to him, and his eyes got wide. Uh, we're heading out. Okay, bye, I said, laughing at the way my brother stood way too fast. Juliet caught my eye over his shoulder and winked. What the hell? She knows, Cooper said, his tone getting dark and promising. I was thinking the same thing. She just winked at me. What do you want to do, baby? My heart skipped a beat when he dropped the D from the nickname, and I wiped my sweating palms on my dress. Tonight was the last night of the weekend trip. The last night I'd be with him, and it didn't matter what we did as long as we were together. What do you think? Come on. He held out his hand, and I took it, watching him scrawl our cabin number on the receipt before dragging me out of the restaurant and toward the hot tub area. We both had our suits on under our cover-ups, since this restaurant was less fancy than the other one. He stopped me in the hall and pressed my back against the wall. I want to finger you in that tub and watch you fall apart without making a sound. People could see... I whispered, clenching my legs together as aggressive want coursed through me. That's the point, baby. He bit down on my bottom lip and tugged. This is payback. Payback, I repeated, sounding like an idiot. He had the unique ability to scramble my thoughts. For what? Flirting with that guy earlier. I wanted to punch him in the face. I wasn't flirting. I thanked him for returning my sunglasses like a normal human being, you wacko. He didn't smile. He led us to the hot tub, took off his shirt, and slid in. Get in here. 
My legs shook a little as I removed my cover-up and took my time getting into the hot water. It was nine at night, and the stars twinkled down at us. People wandered here and there around the deck, but we were the only two in the tub itself. I hissed at the hot water, and Cooper dragged me toward him. No, I'm not sitting on you. That's too obvious. If you want me to come, you'll have to do it when I'm next to you. Oh, he liked the challenge. His eyes lit up, but they lingered on my shoulders for a second. Your skin is burned. Yeah, it's okay. He frowned and dropped a kiss to my shoulder. Does the hot water hurt it? If I go under any farther, then yes, but I'm okay here. He nodded before his fingers found my bottoms and pushed them to the side. He teased my clit in slow circles and stared up at the sky. Have you thought at all about tomorrow? Hmm? Each swirl of his finger sent a mini explosion to my limbs. My body was so in tune with his touch, it wouldn't take long for me to get off. He purposefully went slow to drag this out. Tomorrow, we get off this ship and go back to our normal lives. Swirl, flick, pinch. My muscles got tight, and my heart raced as he quickened his movements. His words were like a bucket of cold water that was hard to ignore. The pressure he caused made me dizzy with want, yet the thought of not being with him like this anymore hurt. Yes, that's true, I said, panting and hoping to keep emotion out of my voice. Trying for a relationship wasn't an option, not with my brother being his best friend and the way Cooper went through women. We wouldn't last more than a month, and then... No. Our weekend on the cruise would be etched in my mind forever, but that was all it could be. All I could afford. Because Cooper would end things eventually, and cause a rift between us. Are we done tomorrow, then? Because, Daniela, I don't want to be. He stilled his finger, and looked down at me with heat. I was desperate for him to continue, but the heat in his eyes gave me pause. If he was using all his moves to catch my attention, it worked. Cooper, please, I begged, but he didn't move his finger against me. I want to try this with you. All of this. Like fuck buddies, I said, hating how needy I sounded because he stopped. Or... I'm thinking the or option. He moved his fingers again, harder and faster this time. Fall apart from me right here where everyone can see you. Cooper, I whispered, trying my best to clamp my mouth shut. I shut my eyes, and he stopped. No, watch me pleasure you. The orgasm hit me hard. Seeing Cooper's slack jaw sent me into a frenzy. The urge to scream was almost painful as my body shook. I panted and rode it out his pupils dilating as he watched me. He never stopped moving his fingers until I blinked a few times and let out a long breath. Jesus. I want to date you, he said. He could have told me he was a wizard with six arms, and that would have surprised me less. Date me? Yes. He licked his bottom lip and pulled me over so I sat on his lap. I know you better than you think. And I'm positive you want me. Let's give it a shot. But my brother, I said, knowing the argument was weak. He would hurt me eventually. And Sam would have to take my side, making an issue with his best friend. There was just no way this was worth the hurt. Cooper's reputation with the ladies was great in the bedroom, but that was it. Sam. Yeah, we'll have to deal with that but I'm willing to if you are. He lifted my chin with his fingers and pressed a soft kiss on me. It's up to you, but I'm not okay with just fooling around. You? King of flings? You don't want a friends with benefits situation? Not with you. He kissed me hard and long, like he had all the time in the world to just taste me. His slow strokes of the tongue and soft touches had me delirious, 
and the twinkling stars above us danced in the ink-black sky. My heart pounded with the severity of each kiss. Each one offered promises, but I wasn't sure I could do a relationship with him. Cooper, God, I said, pulling back from his mouth. I don't know. Wrong answer. His eyes tightened on the sides, and he took a deep breath. What are you afraid of? Sam not forgiving me. You. Us. If it doesn't work out, then we're stuck together hating each other. Would this be different than what we were doing before this trip? Yes, because it would hurt more. You're assuming it won't work out, he said, his tone displeased and hard. It could, you know. I sighed and hated the pain on his face when I didn't say anything. Let's just enjoy tonight, and tomorrow we'll figure it out. He knew exactly what I was doing, avoiding the end, and he let me. He guided us back to our room and showed me over and over how good we were together. I just had a decision to make the next day, and no matter what I chose, someone would be hurt. Chapter 8 I woke up with a heavy pressure in my chest which had nothing to do with Cooper's leg completely on top of mine. His warm breath hit my neck. As much as I wanted this to continue, it was safer to end it. No inevitable heartbreak when Cooper got bored, no drama with Sam, and no awkward moments where we'd be forced to be around each other. Sunlight burst through the windows and hit his perfect face just right, and my heart twisted. This couldn't be the end. We just got started. Before I could wake him up and tell him, someone pounded on our door, hard. Cooper, Daniela, let's go. Where the fuck are you guys? Sam's voice. I groaned and eyed the clock. It was 20 minutes before we were supposed to get off the dock. Holy shit. We were supposed to meet for breakfast 30 minutes ago. Shit. I jumped up and found a robe, yanking the door open to a panicked Sam. Oh my god, we overslept. You think? Sam shook his head, but his face froze when his gaze moved from Cooper's still made bed and the way he sprawled out on mine, with my stuff at the end. What? What? It's not what it looks like, I said all the blood leaving my face and making me numb. His expression hardened as his lip curled up on the side. Sam, don't. You slept with my sister? Sam yelled, shoving me out of the way and throwing his hands into the air. Cooper woke up with a bolt and covered himself with a sheet. Dude, take a second. You can hit me later, but not right now. Cooper's voice was strong and hard and his gaze landed on me for a beat. You're scaring your sister. Sam blinked and took a long breath before grinding his teeth. Why her? You could have any woman. Hell, you've been with plenty of them. She was always off limits. Sam, stop. I moved and put a hand on his shoulder. It was just for the weekend and totally mutual, okay? It doesn't mean anything. You don't need to worry. We knew exactly what we were doing. He huffed and glared at Cooper before giving me his attention. I hate this. I love him, but he's a womanizer, and you're my sister. That's okay if you're not comfortable with this, but we'll be fine, okay? Nothing changes between us, Sam, I said, desperate for him to understand. He stared at me hard before he swallowed and nodded to himself. I'm going to go. You have 15 minutes to get your shit. Let's just... You guys get an Uber. I'm leaving with Juliet. I'll call you later, okay? I said, needing him to agree to it. If he was mad at me, or wouldn't forgive me, I couldn't live with myself. He was all I had left since our parents passed. If he cast me out, I'd never get over it. Please? Of course, Danny, yes. He gave me a tight smile before glaring at Cooper. I will kick your fucking ass. I expected you to. 
Sam stormed out of there with the same fury he stomped in. And when the door shut, I caught my breath. I hated the gross feeling overtaking my body. Shame, guilt, regret. Cooper got up from my bed without a word and slipped on his boxers, jeans, and tossed on a shirt, all without looking or speaking to me. Are you okay? I asked, nervous as hell and unsure what to do. Sam was like a brother to him, so the fact he hadn't said a word worried me. You're quiet. I don't have anything to say. Okay, you're mad. Why? Because, Daniela, he snapped, shoving his toiletries into his bag. You seem to make the decision for us without talking to me or considering how I felt. So yes, I'm pissed. I blinked back emotion and gulped. How could this work outside of here? You saw Sam. You sleep around a lot, and that's... You don't do relationships. If we were on the same page, it would be worth figuring it out. But apparently we're not. He pressed his lips together tight and looked at me with so much hurt in his eyes. I wanted nothing more than to comfort him. Cooper, I said needing to fix everything but not having a clue how to do it. Just wait a minute. No. You need to make up your mind if you want to give this a real shot or not. Until you know I'm backing off. This isn't a game to me, but to speak your language, you're winning. You have all the points. Decide what you want. He picked up his bag and exited the cabin, leaving me alone. Fear clawed down my throat, making swallowing difficult. What if Sam didn't understand or forgive me? What if Cooper stopped talking to both of us? I paced the cabin as my heart hammered, and absolute worry weighted me down. The two most important men in my life were mad at me. Both mattered to me, but I knew before I could even talk to Cooper about anything, I needed to talk to Sam. With a plan in mind... I packed all my stuff and put on a sundress. I shoved my sunglasses on my face to hide my emotions and made sure I hadn't left anything behind in the cabin. Cooper did a great job getting all his shit in less than three minutes. I sighed. An unfamiliar sensation twisted in my chest at the realization I might never kiss him again. Did the lines of hate blur into more all these years, only to explode from one weekend together? Did my dislike stem from jealousy of him always having a different girl on his arm? God, I wasn't sure. I checked out and found a ride chair to my brother's apartment. My heart pounded as nerves danced along my spine. My stomach churned and I wished I had eaten breakfast. The urge to throw up always got worse without food, and I fumbled in my bag for my bottle of water. I took a long sip and checked my phone, hoping that Cooper texted me or reached out or something. But it was blank. Totally blank. We're here, ma'am. I thanked the driver and got out. The sun beat down on me, and I took a deep breath before I pressed the buzzer to my brother's unit. Hey, it's me. Yeah, come up, he growled, and let me in. I took the elevator to his floor, hating the unease in my gut. He sounded pissed, and he should be. Cooper was a womanizer and his best friend. The two of us sleeping together broke all the rules. He had the door cracked, and I let myself in. When I caught him and Juliet sitting on the couch staring at me, I tensed. Her face seemed relaxed, almost amused, and I shut the door and leaned on it. I'm sorry, okay? I said. Don't hate me or him. Do you have feelings for him? Sam asked his tone neutral. It's okay if you do, just tell me. I might, yeah. He took a breath. I trust you. And while I don't love this, it makes sense. How? He's always been protective of you. My heart skipped a beat. Juliet grinned and patted my brother's leg before saying, I've always thought you two were real shit at hiding your feelings. The past two years, you've been dancing around each other. Wait, really? I hated him, though. I frowned, my mind spinning at her words. Well, 
Maybe not. Yeah, I'm thinking not. He gave me a tight smile and blew out a long breath. You fit with each other. And while I don't love it because I know way too much about him, if you want this and he makes you happy, I'm on board. She doesn't need your permission, Juliet snapped, her gaze softening at me. I don't, I said, butterflies exploding in my stomach as what-if scenarios took root. What if it worked with Cooper? What if this could be a thing? I swallowed and played with the hem of my dress. But I'm glad I have it. I think I was using you as an excuse to avoid dating him. You can use me as an excuse all you want. If you want this, really need to try dating him, then do it. But if you don't, you can also let it be what you said. Just a weekend fling. The lines around his eyes relaxed, and he smiled for real this time. He'll kill me for telling you this, but he knew about the room mix-up before we got there. My mouth fell open. Yeah, he pretended to be all pissed off, but I figured you'd say no if it was really a big deal. He smirked when Juliet pinched his side. My fiancé seems to think she was right. I hate it when she's smug. I gotta go. I chewed my lip and clutched my phone to my chest. I need to see him. Just don't tell me too many details, all right? I can handle the basics. Thank you. I love you guys, I said, already yanking the door open and typing on my phone. Daniela, can I see you? Cooper. Depends on why. Daniela, to make this right. Cooper. If that means you're willing to give us a chance, then yes. If not, don't bother. Daniela. See you soon, then. Chapter 9 I had been to Cooper's townhouse every holiday for the past four years, and even a Super Bowl party where I brought my then-boyfriend who got way too drunk and embarrassed me. We broke up a month later due to lack of interest on my part. It startled me to realize the explosive chemistry I had with Cooper was rare. A first... How could I think the two of us would just be a weekend fling? Did our past make everything better? More intense? I'd trusted him for so long. Did that make the sex the best ever? I knocked on his door, wishing I went home to shower or at least spray perfume on. My hair was still a mess from fooling around with him all night, and my face burned from where his five o'clock shadow rubbed against me. It felt like an hour went by before he opened the door. He wore jeans that hung low on his hips, his strong stomach on display since he was shirtless, and his lip curved up in his signature smirk. My heart damn near fluttered in my chest seeing him there, and I knew this was the right move. I'd regret not exploring our explosive chemistry and learning more about the softer side of him I'd missed out on all these years. My stomach swooped, and I hoped he'd hear me out. You got over yourself then, huh? He asked, not moving to let me inside. His brash tone made me stand up straighter. Yes, I did. Say it. Say what? I asked, pursing my lips at the way his heated gaze moved from my face to my bare legs. That you're giving us a real shot. That it wasn't just a weekend fuck, and you really are into me. His tone was even, but the last part made my throat tighten up. Was his ego all for show? Was this beautiful, wonderful man worried that I couldn't possibly want him? Cooper, I want this. You. Us. I crushed on you at 14 and never really stopped. So all that hating nonsense was a lie, he asked his eyes lighting up as he stepped closer to me. He put a hand on my hip and pulled me closer, his clean scent tickling my nose as I chewed my lip. Yes, I just wasn't aware of it until this weekend. You said all that banter was foreplay and, well, you were right. I gulped and fidgeted with my hands. Can I come in? I don't know. I like seeing you squirm on my step. His eyes danced for a second before he cupped my face 
and pressed the softest kiss against my mouth. Relief and joy made my blood sing in my veins when his lips touched mine. We still had a shot. I didn't ruin it with my insecurities. I reached up to lace my arms around his neck to deepen the kiss. He groaned for a second before picking me up, and he closed the door behind us. No, stop it, Danny. Stop kissing you, I said, shocked and a little embarrassed. After exploring every single part of each other, kissing seemed the most innocent. Why? Because, baby, we need to clear up a few things before we do this for real. What things? He sat down on his recliner, my legs still wrapped around him, and he ran his nose along my jaw for a few seconds. God damn it, you smell so sweet. Is this your idea of a talk? You're distracting. He pulled back and looked at me. We have a lot on the line, but I think the risk is worth it. Are you absolutely in? Yes. You talked to your brother? Yes, I did. He's not loving this, but he supports it. I gulped when he nodded. What about you, though? You need to clear it up with him, right? He's your best friend. Baby, want to know a secret? Um, sure. My breath caught in my throat at the way his tone dripped with amusement and heat. Why are you giving me that look? He failed to mention one of the other reasons we stopped inviting you around in high school. What's that? Sam saw me looking at you a few times and decided he didn't like it. I joked around that we'd end up together anyway. You said this at 16? Sure did, Danny. His face warmed and he moved his strong hands up and down my bare arms. I've always loved you a little more than anyone else. I want us to explore that and see what it could be. I trust you without a doubt, and I think I can make you happy. Swallowing became harder the longer I studied the warmth in his eyes. He meant every word. Sam said you knew about us being stuck in one room. If that bastard didn't want us together, he shouldn't have told you that. He dipped down and bit my bottom lip. I was sick of pretending I didn't want this, and I'm pretty confident you were too. Yes, I am. Was. I don't even know. I traced his collarbone as my body burned inside out. I've always loved you too, you know, even when I hated you. You never hated me. You gotta stop saying that. He chuckled and lifted my chin with his fingers. We'll work. Trust me. I'm starting to, Cooper. And if I think about it, you've always taken care of me. Between the fights and eye rolls, you were supportive. I know I make comments about your past hookups, but I also know you do it to protect yourself, your heart. I know what's important to you. And I think, I think I can make you happy too. I put my hand over his chest and took a deep breath. It terrified me to give him all the power, but it was what I had to do to make this right, to give us a real shot. I want to be yours. I want us to be exclusive, and there's a really good chance we can make this work. He sucked in a breath, and I nodded, hoping my words reassured him. Coop, I'm in, all in. Consequences be damned. I can't just pretend this weekend hasn't changed everything. I smiled and closed the distance between our mouths, kissing him like I had all the time in the world. Because we did. I was going to date my brother's best friend after all these years, and it no longer scared me. If anything, I liked the sound of it a whole lot. He groaned into my mouth for a beat before breaking the connection and smiling down at me with so much tenderness, my heart lodged in my throat. I squeezed him tighter. Can't believe Cooper Swanson is my dreamy boyfriend now. Oh, are we labeling it? Is that allowed, Baby D? He teased, earning a pinch to the side from me. Yes, if we're doing this, there's no confusion. You're mine now, I said, making my voice firm and louder. It was the right move. His face lit, 
and he picked me up to walk us over to his kitchen counter. He broke apart from the kiss, leaving me cold and needy. Hey, what are you doing? Cooking us breakfast, my girlfriend. I thought you hated cooking, I said, watching him with curiosity as he bent over to grab a pan, his pants stretching over his very toned ass. French toast still your favorite? He got the bread and eggs out before coming back over to me and cupping my face. I might hate cooking, but I love taking care of you. There's a difference. My heart grew three sizes, and I knew without a doubt we would make this work. He was the guy of my fantasies and dreams, the guy who I trusted without hesitation. Because if we did work out, it would be amazing. He always felt like part of our family, even in the years we didn't get along. But us being together would only make our connection stronger. The End <laughs>